you choose to accept it. It's a quest. It's a quest for fun. Well, The Rock says, why don't we just cut right to the chase? Okay, now he, uh, you know, he wants to get together. <laughs> well, you know, he wants to talk. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. It's showtime, folks! What are you? I'm... Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to another edition of And I Quote, the live weekly show where we bring in a special guest from any and all corners of the nerd universe. We ask them some questions, get to know them a little bit better, and also find out what projects they have planned for the future. I am your host, Ryan of NeuroCulture, and our guest this week is someone that myself and a lot of us here at NeuroCulture, maybe those of us outside of NeuroCulture, have been looking forward to having a conversation with this man for a long, long time time. He is the owner and operator of Famous Faces and Funnies Comics and Toys located in West Melbourne, Florida, aka the Sunshine State. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rick Shea. Rick, how you doing, man? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Ryan. Oh, absolutely. We appreciate you being here. And also, for those of you who are watching us live, if you have any questions for our guest, Rick Shea, please feel free to leave them in the live chat in the comment section. Our producers are going to be monitoring that as we go throughout the course of the show, so feel free to do so. So to kick things off here, Rick, let's go back to the beginning. What were some of your favorite movies or TV series growing up? Um, when I was first kind of getting into this stuff, it was, um, I mean, it was it was far and few, you know, few and far between, but uh, obviously Batman 1989 um, with Michael Keaton was some of my first few friends that I made based off comics and stuff like that were off of, oh man, I love the Batman movies too, you know, stuff like that, Batman animated series, uh, the X-Men, cartoons, all that stuff when it was first, you know, uh, going on. I've been selling comics now 31 years, even before Famous Faces. I worked at two other comic stores, the only job I've ever had. Um, and it just, you know, it's been something I love doing and, um, you know, what getting into, uh, all these, you know, we're, we're in the golden age right now of comic book entertainment where nerd culture has become pop culture, you know, and it's, it's just what everyone's into. Everyone can't wait for that next winter soldier and Falcon. Everyone can't wait for that next issue or, or, uh, you know, episode of invincible, um, back then it was few and far between, but, uh, yeah, I loved everything. I mean, I, I even, I even saw steel and barbed wire in the movie theaters because if it was a comic book movie, I would go see it. I'm not saying they're great, but at the time we took everything we could get, which was very, uh, limited compared to today where every, you know, nerd culture, um, comic and, um, graphic novels being adapted into TV and movies. So we're really, really lucky to have that right now, you know? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Now, what would you say were some of your favorite comics growing up, aside from maybe Batman or some of the other popular Marvel titles? Uh, my, my favorite teams of all time have always been, I've always been more of a team person. Uh, Teen Titans and Deathstroke is my favorite character. Uh, and then Legion of Superheroes is the other um, one where uh, I generally am not as big into like um, 60s and, and uh, 50s comics, more kind of cheesy, crazy over the top stuff. I, I appreciate it and obviously built up like anything else, but I'm not going to if I've got a choice of watching the next, you know, Winter Soldier and Falcon or the next or, you know, an old episode of I Love Lucy. Well, I appreciate what's come before, you know, um, you know, like anything else, modern sensibilities lead to modern tastes. And that's where I'm at on on uh you know on comics i'm always trying something new i'm always trying um to dive into something new and exciting and uh i kind of joke my nostalgia is broken you know like everyone else has an, has more of an affinity for transformers or gi joe and stuff like that well i appreciate that i think i'm more of a um i don't know i'm just always looking for um something new to dive into whether it's in comics or leading into um now com all these comic book tv shows and movies we're just so lucky to have that so just a really in a golden age of nerdy entertainment. It's awesome that nerds have taken over the world and everyone's excited about all these properties and always asking, Oh, what's, Oh, tell me more about Invincible. Tell me more about walking dead. Tell me more about, you know, this Marvel or DC show or movie. So uh, it's great, great times we're living in. Oh, hundred percent. Everywhere you look, there's a comic book movie, comic book TV series, and there's another one in development. There's another one over here. There's another one over there. Everywhere you look, you get a comic book series, you get a comic book series, you get this, you get that, you go, oh, get it. Anyhow, <laughs> favorite favorite comic writers or artists? Um, my favorite creators are um, uh, Jeff Johns. Everything he's done from um, the early 2000s. He started in 1999 with that uh, Star Girl uh, Stars and Stripes series, which is now a great new series on um, moving from CW and HBO Max. Uh, 
And it was, you know, that's a brilliant series. Uh, everything he did from JSA and Flash, it got me into a whole bunch of new characters like the Justice Society of America. I didn't know much about them before. Um, and he just got me entranced, in, you know, by every issue was like, man, I want to know more about Wildcat. I need to know more about, um, you know, Jakeem, uh, JJ Thunder, Jakeem and these new characters and uh, seeing different generations of DC history come together. Uh, you know, it started really with a Stargirl run and then just built from there. Um, so, yeah. So for, for me, Jeff Johns is probably the best superhero writer. I mean, he just d has done so many great things at DC with very few misses. Uh, and um, Robert Kirkman, of course, Walking Dead and Invincible are not only two of my favorite series, but two of my favorite endings of all time. I mean, they're both phenomenal, phenomenal last issues. Um, and then my my other probably two favorite writers are um, Brad Meltzer. I've liked everything he's done from his novels to his TV shows to his comics. I was like, man, who's this poor guy who has to follow Kevin Smith on Green Arrow? And then he came in and showed up Kevin Smith and just did an incredible job on Archer's Quest and Identity Crisis and his JLA run. I wish he would write more comics, but he, I swear he's the busiest guy and one of the nicest guys in, uh, in the industry. So it just seems like he doesn't have enough time. And then my final... Favorite writer, uh, Brian K. Vaughn. Why the Last Man is my favorite series of all time. Uh, Ex Machina, Runaways, just everything he's done. Pride of Baghdad, I was like, a book about talking lions, how great can this be? And then we ended up selling, you know, 100 plus copies in two weeks. Every other store was like, you're crazy ordering that many. And we just sold, I, I probably sold five copies to people who had never read a comic before in their life because they wrote a four page, pretty much seminar on how much I love this book. It was, uh, Pride of Baghdad is one of the two books I've read in my life that I read and reread in the same sitting and just enjoyed it that much. I'm like, is it just me? Am I crazy? Is this book really that good? And it, it was, and it got everyone hooked. So, um, and yeah, Why the Last Man is my favorite comic series of all time by Brian K. Vaughan. Um, hands down, I'm more excited for that TV show to come out, I think, later this year, probably in September, October on FX. They're filming episode mm -hmm. six right now. I follow every one of the writers um, from Eliza Clark to everyone else on Instagram. And it's just amazing watching this come together. You know, I've been waiting literally two decades now for uh, Why the Last Man TV series. So um, I think that's going to be the next Walking Dead in terms of just like the the buzz show everyone's talking about every week. So can't wait to see what happens there. Oh, my goodness gracious. And speaking of Jeff Johns, one of the first trades I ever read, because I got into comics just a few years ago, but you know what they say, better late than never. I read Flashpoint. Right. Oh, yeah. Flash awesome. Flashpoint's one of my favorite trades because it was one of the ones that the at, at the shop I was at at the time they recommended to me and I thought oh this is interesting and then I look at the synopsis of alternate timeline ooh I wonder what happens here and then I read it and I was like oh my goodness gracious this is really really good stuff and by the way why the last man my I have not read the series as of yet but I've heard a lot about it over time I've heard a lot about it on the interweb so I'm looking forward to one day one day nice. sitting down <laughs> And reading it, and when the show or the series comes out, I'll have to keep my eye on the marketing campaign for that because now you have me curious. Oh, and I'm so psyched for that. Yeah, hands down. I, I literally, it was going to be a, a movie, and then it was going to be a trilogy of movies, and mm -hmm. it was going to be a movie, and the rights juggled around 20 different times and had a bunch of false starts. Uh, but yeah, hands down with uh, Wild Last Man, I think that's it's just such a brilliant premise. The execution was flawless. Um, I, I'm, they're also doing Brian Kimmel's Paper Girls. I, I liked Runaways. I wish more people checked that out on Hulu. It was, had a really, really strong ending, as always, like anything else, uh, BKB. But yeah, Why the Last Man, hands down, my favorite series in history. Beats Out Watchmen and uh, Identity Crisis is my favorite thing I've ever read in my life. So cannot wait to see that adapted onto the, um, you know, onto the uh, TV series on FX. Well, I look, I look forward to learning more about that as we go along. Now, what was your first Comic Con? Um, my first Comic Con, it was probably a tiny show in I think uh, New York, probably in the in like maybe 1988, probably just a tiny one day hotel show, you know. And it's funny seeing how how it's gone from there to um, uh, you know these humongous conventions. MegaCon is our big one in Orlando every year. We have a ten booth setup. We're one of the biggest uh, setups there, and it goes crazy. Um, it'll be interesting to get back to conventions this year. It'll, you know, after after not having any conventions in this last year, of course. Uh, but we're we're still excited for that. Um, I've been I then I probably had another small one in Virginia where I met like Eric Larson and a few mm -hmm. other uh, creators. Um, and you know, had some great experiences there growing up in probably 80, 88, 89, somewhere in there. And then of course Florida and, and MegaCon in the early nineties. Um, 
I've been lucky enough to go to um, Comic-Con itself, San Diego Comic-Con, I think from 98 to 2010. Um, we had uh, some awesome experiences then. It was back then, I think it was, you know, quote unquote, only 42,000 people or whatever then, you know, before the, the 125 or 128 cap out that they have now. But um, yeah, we had, we had so many great times going to comic conventions and, uh, you know, a lot of fun at Comic-Con and, uh, it's always it's always a great time, you know. It's it's awesome seeing how much the audience has changed and how much it's grown and how many new people are into it. And now it's like you know, a dream for people to get to um, you know check out Comic Con and all these awesome conventions and just be able to you know see these things before they're really out. And that audience keeps on um, just growing and growing. So it's awesome. So I'm, I'm lucky to have had some wonderful experiences at Comic Cons. It's been a while since I've been there on the other side as a fan, uh, but I always have a great time every time I go. You know. Yeah, man. One of my, one of my, one of a lot of people's goals, I'm sure, is to go to the WrestleMania of Comic Cons, which is SDCC in San Diego, California. Once Earth reopens, yep. everything is safe. Everything can go back to a sense of normalcy and things of that nature. But that's, you know, that's cool that you had a chance to visit some of the smaller shows, go to some of the other ones, because they all, because as we know nowadays, especially conventions come in all different shapes and sizes. Now, the question that's been on my mind, the questions, the question that's been on everyone's mind here at Neuroculture and outside of the nerd culture offices, famous faces and funnies, what inspired you to open up a comic book store and where did the name famous faces and funnies come from? Uh, well, there, there's two answers to that question and they are related. Um, I actually, like I said, I worked at two other stores when I was, um, uh, I worked at Space Coast Comics uh, for my friend Bruce when I was first riding my bike down US One, which is not probably the safest road for a kid to be riding a bike at, at you know, at 13 years old. But um, I survived, so there's that, so that's good. Uh, but Space Coast Comics, I worked there, and then um, Pat's Comics for a while, and then eventually jumped, kind of hit a fork in the road where there was two comic stores in our area, and one person was like, "Hey, I'd like you to work for me over here." You'd kind of be, you know, fifth or sixth in command, and then someone else was like. Hey, why don't you come over here? I know you know a lot about comics. I know you love comics. I know you read like 500 comics a month at the time when I was, you know, 14 or 15 years old or whatever. And um, uh, ultimately, uh, Kevin, the former owner of Famous, uh, the, the owner of Famous Faces before it was called Famous Faces, basically was like, hey, why don't you come over here and work here? I was like, okay, I'll kind of be second or third in command instead of, you know, fifth or fifth or sixth and, and low man on the totem pole. Let's, um, yeah, let me jump in. So I jumped in with, um, with Kevin. Uh, we had a tiny little booth in the flea mall. It was like an indoor flea market uh, way back in uh, 1990, uh, 93, maybe late 92. Um, and that was a short, short time there. Basically grew into a very, very small store. It was 800 square feet. Um, and now, you know, our store is now 11,000 square feet. And it's worked out, you know, quite a bit, grown, grown quite a bit. But um, Kevin used to deal in autographs, hence the weird name Famous Faces. And comics as in funnies, as in funny books. Um, so that's where a very weird, unique name uh, comes from. Robert Kirkman gives a static. He's like, I'm not sure. He goes, I love your store. I'm not sure about your name. But we had him as a guest way back in 2006. And every time I saw him at Comic-Con, he was like, man, he's like, I'm not sure about the name of that store, man. He goes, your store is amazing. One of the best stores I've been in. But uh, that name is really, really weird. And it is. It is an odd name. But it just kind of worked. FFF, you know, as a cool abbreviation. Um, and ultimately... Uh, as odd as it is, you know, within six months of, of actually opening the store, which was um, on March 1st, 1994, uh, we probably stopped carrying autographs. But Kevin used to deal in autographs by getting autographs, catching people at um, shows or, you know, certain places or writing to celebrities. So we, we kept the odd name. It works. Uh, but, you know, it definitely stands out. It was just there were so many stores that were like, ooh, comics and collectibles or you know, Eric's comics or whatever. So I think it was just a standout unique name. And even though most people are like, where did this name come from? You know, it just kind of stood um, and uh, and went from there. So, um, so yeah, so working for the former owner, Kevin, I worked for him for, I think it was about, uh, I worked for him for um, 12 years. And then basically, you know, he ended up uh, selling me the store. Like it just wasn't as much of his passion as it was mine. And he basically was like, hey, you know, I'm just going to, um, he, he, he was in a pretty good position. So he just ended up selling the store to me and it's just the way, you know, went way it went from there. But, um, so yeah, so I've, I've worked there the whole time. It's before it was even called famous faces, you know, way back. So got 28 years, 28 and a half years, something like that. Um, but ultimately, uh, yeah, that's, that's where odd name comes from is just used to deal in autographs and haven't dealt in autographs in you know, decades at this point. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a good story. Now, when you first opened, how many members were on the staff then as compared to now? 
Um, it was pretty small. I mean, um, generally for, for a while, it was myself and Kevin um, and uh, Fred, and then Fred w had moved away. And then uh, Pat, very, very few. I mean, it was generally two to three people working there, including um, the, the actual owner and myself. Um, I've been really the only constant, uh, whereas at this point now I have nine uh, full-time employees and there's some new people coming up um, as we take on new projects. Uh, we just keep growing. We're, we're very, very lucky to have had, uh, even with COVID, we, we actually closed our store for eight months to the public uh, voluntarily. Um, we were just taking COVID procedures very, very seriously. And we have some, mm -hmm. some of our staff have underlying health issues. So we just want to be real safe and real smart about it. And uh, just did the best we could. Our main goal was to make sure our staff and our customers stayed and remained safe. And we're very lucky that no one's been uh, been gotten sick, which which we're very thankful for. Because um, yeah, that if one of us got sick, obviously it would just lead quickly to most you know the whole staff getting sick and closing the store, which um, would be a terrible situation for you know even if it was just a few weeks, it's still not not anything anyone wants to deal with. So. Um, so yeah, so at this point we've got, I've got nine full-time employees and, um, in addition to myself and we're growing and growing, uh, compared to, you know, back when it was two or three employees for the longest time. So just lucky to have grown is from an 800 square foot store up to now 11,000 square feet. And it's just worked out really, really well. And we're very thankful for the position we're in and, and how much, you know, all my staff loves this industry. I always say I have the best staff anywhere. I would put the knowledge of, you know, Paul's knowledge of comics. I'm proud to say he knows way more about comics than I do. I'm so happy, you know, to have someone that literally seems like they've read everything. They know every obscure X-Men or Spider-Man reference and first appearance. And, you know, I, I feel like I know a lot about comics, but man, Paul shows me up on a regular basis. He just knows his stuff uh, left and right. So I'm very, very floored by that, you know. That is, that is truly amazing. Now, when did you and your team start doing the Facebook live sales on your social media? Um, we started doing Facebook Live, I believe the date is April 21st, 2018. Um, and it was just one of those things where we were talking about it about a year earlier. Um, our friend Marcus at Main Street Comics in um, Kentucky, he was the first one I actually saw doing this. And I was like, oh, man, this is brilliant. And we talked about it for like three months. Oh, hey, we got to do this. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it soon. We'll do it soon. We'll do it soon. And then next thing we know, it's almost a year later. And we're like, all right, screw it. Are we ready? Not exactly. But we just got to throw ourselves right in. So um, April 2018, we just decided... All right, let's let's get this going. We'll do two days a week, and uh, it just kept growing and growing and growing. It went from every Monday with um, uh, merchandise and uh, every Friday with comics to gradually, okay, let's throw in every other Thursday, okay. And then um, as the pandemic hit, um, and we decided, to, you know, we closed the public. I think it was March twenty fourth, uh, twenty twenty. Um, we that was also last week. We got new comics in. You know, there were six weeks without new comics, didn't come back till May 20th, 2020. Um, so, but we were like, how are we going to survive without new comics, you know, for, for that long? Um, I know some stores that are like 85, 90% of their sales are that week's new comics. And we're, we're lucky to not have as big a reliance on new comics. Um, but ultimately, we were like, well, what are we going to do? So we, we just did some stuff kind of outside the box. And, um, you know, Paul had the brilliant idea of doing the 26 hour live auction to go through the whole alphabet, A through Z, a letter per hour. Uh, for that first what would have been free comic may and we were there the whole 26 hours no no naps no nothing i mean just shot right through it um and then we then it went so well a month later we did another one that was like hey let's do again 12 hours and 12 hours a little more moderate where it's you know noon to to midnight or whatever rather than um a full-on 26 in a row but um but yeah ultimately we're just, it comes down to just trying new stuff reaching out to new people and that's been the strength of our store is just um between paul and sam and um, just all of our amazing staff. There's so many great ideas. Uh, Leah's taken over as manager and she's done an incredible job as Sean has stepped down, you know, to concentrate more on, on uh, raising a daughter. Um, so ultimately we're just lucky to have um, such an unbelievable staff that goes above and beyond and works so many hours to kind of keep things running so smoothly. So I'm just so lucky to have uh, so many people that clearly love what they do and uh, never had a better staff than we have right now, you know? Mm. That is truly me. And one of the beauties about social media, and this is just real quick coming from me, this is how I discovered you guys was through social media, was seeing things pop up on our, on our feeds, whether it be through Facebook or otherwise. When I first started seeing it, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is a really cool looking store. I like the display they got, the little setup that they got going on. Now I remember the first time I saw you guys, I felt like you guys were in a corner somewhere. Right. And then, oh, you, yeah. moved your, and then you moved your live sales to a little bit of a different area because I think you were either expanding the store or just moving the space around. Am I correct? 
Right. Um, we used to do it in the office just because obviously running it at the same time that we were um, open, it was kind of like, oh, oh, can you go grab this? Oh, yeah, we'll run around the corner to the back room. You know, um, we're in an odd, very odd shaped building that used to be a two screen movie theater. They used to run like concerts and stuff there. Uh, oh so God. that's what uh, when we first moved into this plaza, we moved in the plaza in December 2007. And for one month of my life, I had two stores. Uh, there's a reason people are always like, oh, are you guys going to expand? You guys seem to be doing well. I would much rather have one giant superstore at 11,000 square feet than have two or three stores because, you know, um, even that one month juggling um, two stores, it was a lot. It was like, you know, we just didn't want to close right before December. It was December 2007. So closing a month before, uh, you know, the month of holiday shopping season would have been crazy. So people were finding us on Lake Washington and um, I think it was like 2,700 square foot store. And then the one we moved into was 2,800, just in a better uh, area right down the street from the mall, you know, right near 95. Uh, so yeah, very, very close to everything. But um, for me, I would always rather just keep on growing and growing, you know, size wise. And again, I can't, unless I can clone all of my staff, I don't think we would have quite the same success if we moved to another, another area. So um, yeah, we started off in the office where it was a tiny little, you know, a, a small thousand square foot uh, room that was crowded as can be because there's so much stuff in there. So yeah, so going from there to once we decided, oh, okay, hey, we're not going to open for a few months. Let's go in the back room. And then since then, we've kept it in the back room and we just stay safe. You know, every once in a while, someone's like, hey, how come you guys aren't wearing masks? But we're generally about uh, 15 to 20 feet away from anyone else in the store um, just because we have um, a few racks on wheels and we've kept those through the years as the store has grown and changed and it's helped uh, where we kind of have those like cordon off where the area we're at. So anyone else that's running to the shelves and grabbing stuff, potentially interacting with customers, of course, has a mask on. But ultimately, you know, myself and Paul or uh, Stephen or Sam, they're they're we're the only ones there generally without a mask on. So um, but yeah, ultimately having it in that new lo new area where we can get to stuff quicker and um, poll people are asking for, hey, I want to see WWE pops. Hey, I want to see what Marvel Legends you have. You know, this way we can just run and grab them. Um, during the sale, and sometimes there's you know eight nine people helping to run the run the sale where they're just behind the scenes or you know Josh is up front dealing with customers and in between he's like oh someone just asked for defenders back issues let me go grab those and bring them back so we're just lucky to have such an awesome staff that just stays on and just helps each other out and that's what it's all about it's all about teamwork and working together you know seems no one ever sleeps at famous faces and right? funders <laughs> honestly everything that goes on there every time I see you guys on live feeds and I see people rushing from one aisle to the other to grab stuff for other customers that may have special requests during either the live feeds or when you have customers physically in the store, I'm thinking to myself, how can these people do it? I mean, honestly, I feel like you guys just run on constant right. fumes and a lot of Red Bull. I mean, my right. goodness gracious. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's what that's what it comes down to. It's just, uh, yeah, it feels like we don't sleep. Uh, we kind of joke about, you know, uh, we finally started turning on our way message in the middle of the night, but people would message at 2.30 or 3 a.m. and I'd get right back to them and they were like, oh my God, I was not expecting a message till, you know, the next day. It's like, we finally were like, all right, we're leaving the store at midnight or one or two. It'll be finally turned on the away message. But generally we just try and get back to people as quickly as possible. And uh, that's what it's all about is just co communication. Uh, whether it's someone new that's finding us from live sales and giving us their email. We're like, oh, we already have your thing drafted. We just needed your email to send you, you an invoice. You know, um, We've got really got it down to a great system. Uh, this, this last year, especially, um, James has really, really done an incredible job doing all the, in, the majority of the invoicing. And um, just he, he and Sam kind of put their heads together and every month they're like, hey, here's what the calendar should look like. Let's do this for a special Marvel live sale, a special pop live sale. Hey, uh, you know, we did the $5 live sale for our anniversary. We sold... Um, close to a thousand items for five dollars a piece it was insane you know we were, it was it was just nuts we expected it to be like oh we'll sell four or five hundred items at five dollars a piece and people went they reacted much bigger than we thought we had a hundred people watching so yeah it was, mm -hmm. it was nuts it was just crazy so you never know exactly what's going to sell uh but uh we were lucky to have like i think bleeding cool i think gail simone put it on her facebook or tweeted it uh you know so we were lucky to have some friends in the industry to kind of help make it where a hundred plus people were watching us sell five dollar stuff and they were like are you sure that 35 dollar deadpool graphic novel is five bucks we're like it's all five dollars you know we've just got a lot of stuff where we're just overstocked we got it on a sale we're hooking you guys up so that's what it's all about you know I, I, I should know. I was there. I watched that live feed. I saw the numbers kept on climbing and people were saying, don't share anymore. Sam is tired. Don't, right, don't, put, exactly. Sam, don't <laughs> put Sam and her in her crew through any more trouble. And I said, I'm sorry, I got to share this because you guys are awesome tacular and you're killing it. Right. Thank you. 
I can't, I, I can't help it. Now, before Earth shut down due to the situation with the pandemic, when did Famous Faces and Funny start having a booth or a setup at Comic Cons, and how did it go from start to where it is now? Um, we've been at Mega Cons and stuff like that. Even before that, it was like small, tiny one day shows. Um, JB Brightbale, Brightbale was the guy who ran Megacon for years before he sold it to um, CrossGen. And before he was doing Megacon and filling up the Orla the Orange County Convention Center, um, he was doing tiny one-day hotel shows. So probably 95, 96, um, just within a few years of being around, we were doing those tiny little shows. One day was in Vero Beach. One day was in you know Daytona, whatever. Um, stuff like that. So we were we were doing those conventions um, just years ago, uh, you know, as, as soon as we could and do it, you know, it was so different then where it was a one day hotel show without in the middle of nowhere, you know, and it was like, oh, this one focuses on anime. This one focuses on uh, straight up, you know, silver and bronze comics. You know, it was like it was different. Um, but, yeah, we, we were lucky to be doing small shows and then gradually grow from, you know, one booth at Megacon to two booths to three booths um, as last year, especially in my limited downtime you know i've gone through a lot of paperwork and stuff like that and it's like funny seeing oh look oh we did bank con we did x amount and it's you know we were excited then about it and it's like we're doing then a tenth of what we're you know a tenth or a fifth or whatever what we're doing now um at a show but it was just like anything else you use that to grow and kind of establish a new audience and hand out a bunch of business cards and if someone has, gets a good deal from you oh man that dc direct figure you sold me for 20 that guy has it for 50 that's awesome you guys gave me a good deal it's like we just try and treat people fairly you know we know what we paid for it and we're not you know, we're not greedy. We're just just trying to make sure everyone leaves happy with a smile on their face. That's what it's all about. You know, it's what we what we love doing is just getting people excited about the comics we're passionate about, and um, we we enjoy doing what we love. And I think it shows in our staff every single day. You know, that is truly incredible. Now, when Earth reopens, have you and the team at Famous Faces and Funnies considered getting a booth that shows outside of the Sunshine State of Florida? Maybe doing a little bit of a road tour for you guys. Um, we've kind of talked about Heroes Con for years and years because it seems like that's the most like comic focused um, thing. That's in North Carolina, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely a um, a big kind of step. Uh, we've done Dragon Con before, way back. We've done Heroes before. Uh, it's just been ten or fifteen years since we've been to um, either of those shows, and it's the question is. Will, you know, taking a giant U-Haul truck versus, uh, you know, all the way there. Last year for Mega, we ended up taking two U-Haul trucks. We had that much stuff ready and packed. And I was like, we had one that was ready. And uh, we're like, yeah, this is going to fill this up. Uh, no, everything else is packed and ready. Screw it. We're taking a second truck. So last second, I called the company and was like, hey, can I can I rent another truck? They're like, you were just here. We're like, we know. We have more stuff than we thought. So we needed a second uh, you know, 24 foot truck. And they were like, all right, sure. If you, that's what you want to do. So, um, that was definitely a, a giant, you know, step up where we were in a, I know where did we put it all in our booth? It was crazy. And we still had some stuff on the truck that like, after we sold stuff on Thursday and Friday for mega, we went to the truck each night and dragged more stuff off and we're like, Oh cool. Hey, we sold these statues. Let's pull a second or third one of that same one and bring it, you know? So ultimately, um, yeah, I, I think we will go to heroes con. I think we will go to, um, uh, Dragon Con and some other stuff like that. It's just a matter of playing it smart and safe and uh, gradually seeing how how Megacon goes when that comes back in August. If if they don't cancel it, uh, if they cancel, we understand we're not gonna you know be uh, too brokenhearted about that. We'll be back when it's there. And uh, we I also um, I own um, co own alongside uh, Mike from Mike's Comics, Mike Priest, uh, Orlando Toy and Comic Con and Melbourne Toy and Comic Con. I get a questions almost every day. Hey, when are you when are you guys bringing that back? And we're like. We're going to be slow and steady. Uh, the last show we had was amazing. We had Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman and Ryan Otley and some giant names uh, for that. So the last thing we want to yeah. do is put on a show that's like a reduced kind of, you know, diet version of that show. Uh, mm -hmm. So, ra you know, we'd rather come back strong and be uh, hopefully put on our best show yet when we come back. But it's just a matter of the amount of work that goes into it, especially Sam. I mean, she does an unbelievable job of um, – getting everything together, making sure every dealer, I don't know how, how she keeps it all straight in her head. I feel like I'm, I'm fairly good at, at what I do, but Sam just amazing, 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 keeping track of everything. And it's just like, she's like, Oh, well this person shouldn't be next to that person. Cause what they sell is so similar that, you know, you don't want someone to be at someone's table and we'll go over to the other person's table. She's like, so we'll move her over here. We'll move him over here. And this person wants to be in a corner and this person doesn't want to be in a corner. And I'm like, 
Uh, it's amazing. It's like it's like Tony Stark with the like hologram board where he's like moving stuff mm -hmm. around. That's how mm -hmm. Sam's mind works, and it's it's amazing that uh, she does such a great job of. Oh well, last time this person said this, and they said, oh, they can move to a corner instead. And I'm like, I don't know how she keeps it straight, but the amount of work that goes into it, the months and months and months of planning for a convention like that, and the last thing we want to do is sign sign a big guest and then have them last second go. Uh, it's, COVID still is, uh, you know, in effect. Let me. Um, not go to that show, uh, you know, last second is last thing we want to have is people show up and expect to see a big guest and then they pull last second. So we're just, we're just taking it slow and steady. Um, and we'll, we'll be back when we're back. But, uh, the earliest I can see it is be January, February, probably for 2022, just to be safe because the six months of planning that to make sure everyone has a great time at the convention, um, and just juggling, uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see how hotels, and um you know how how convention centers are what they're charging and everything when it all comes back so um so yeah so slow and steady but it, yeah eventually i can see us maybe it might not be for two or three years but i think we'll end up going to dragon con or heroes con or some other conventions along the east coast uh southeast area and uh, see how that goes so yeah we'll, we'll see what the future holds well it's true what they say slow and steady always wins the race you got it yeah certainly yeah. Got to keep that in mind as you go along. Now, with all these conventions, all these events that you've been to, things you've seen, people you've met, all this stuff, when it comes to going to conventions, some people like to go to the vendors and buy stuff and collect things. So my question to you is, what do you enjoy collecting? Um, I'll buy pretty much anything with Deathstroke on it. Uh, Titans, Legion, like the you know my favorite stuff there. Uh, I don't take home near as much of the store as you'd expect. Uh, I think it's kind of like um, a fine line. Uh, where, you know, once you, once you own a uh, the amount of stuff I brought in that I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I hadn't sold my, you know, first appearance of this character or the early Walking Deads I brought in or the McFarlane, you know, Spider-Man books that are now like $300. And I'm like, yeah, I think I sold that someone for $25, you know, years ago, you know, uh, but ultimately it's, it's, uh, you almost have to be not really much of a collector anymore to own a store. Um, there was someone arguing on message boards, like a retailer message board years ago. And there was like a one per store item. And it was like the hottest book. It was like $200 where everyone was like fighting over it. Um, and this guy's like, Oh, well, I got mine in and uh, I, I kept mine for my own collection. I can't have an incomplete collection. And everyone else is like, you do you, man. But if I were you, I would sell that for $200 now. Um, you can always replace it later or whatever. And the guy's like, well, then I won't, won't have it in my collection. And it's like, you have to decide, are you on the side of a retailer who's trying to do this for a living? Or are you a fan that's kind of, you know, just sort of almost like a backpack dealer or whatever. So, um, and the, the guy like couldn't take anyone's advice and he's telling all these people, he's telling a guy that owns 10 stores that he's wrong. It's like, mm, I'm going to take the advice of the guy who owns 10 stores and is a very successful and a great guy, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll, I would definitely side with, with him on what, how best to run it. So um, ultimately I don't take home a whole lot compared to what it used to be. You know, there was times I was filling up a long box, I think every month at, <laughs> at one point when I was first working for, um, for Kevin, where it was like, Oh, I was buying almost every comic, you know, I was reading um, literally three, 400 comics a, a, mu a month, which is insane. Cause at this point, I think if I'm, I'm reading, you know, uh, 150 comics a year, I'm surprised. I mean, it's just, I, I'm reading a lot of number ones and PDFs of stuff in advance from Image or Boom or whoever's kind enough to get us to it, get them to us in advance, mm -hmm. and then but base our orders off of that and say, oh man, hey, Nottingham was better than we expected. And that's why we ordered, you know, more aggressively on that than a lot of stores did. And then, you know, still sold out. Uh, we sold every copy, um, you know, and just went quickly. But sure enough, you know, we're, we're able to read books like Stray Dogs. It's a book we love. That's uh it's basically Lady in the Tramp meets Silence of the Lambs. So that's a crazy book from uh, from Image that we really enjoyed. We we liked it so much that we ordered like 60 or 70 copies of number one and got people into it. And it, when it became kind of a buzz book and kind of took off a little on eBay, we, we sold every copy at cover price, you know, and just are like, hey, you know, here's here's a book we really enjoy. Check it out. And everyone read it went, oh, my God, this book's crazy. You know, Silence of the Lambs and Lady in the Tramp. You know, well, that's a that's a wild mix up. But, um, yeah, sure enough, we, we enjoy what we're doing. And I think it shows in the passion of our staff and how much we love comics and really just have a great time doing this every day. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when conventions and Earth reopens, is there anyone in particular you're looking forward to meeting at a convention somewhere down the line? Um, I mean, I've, I've been pretty lucky uh, for at San Diego Con back when it was much calmer. Like, you know, it was just it was awesome to just walk up and, and meet some of the biggest legends in the industry. Um, I, I was able to meet Stan Lee a bunch of times between uh, uh, I think the first big, big con I went to as a dealer was uh, through Space Coast Comics in like 90. 
two. Uh, oddly enough, my friend Howard, when we were only 16, Howard just barely got his license and we drove all the way to Baltimore, <laughs> which is insane. Uh, you know, uh, but it went to, we were at a Baltimore Orioles game, Diamond, uh, Steve Jeppe co-owns the Baltimore Orioles. Um, yeah. But it was like, uh, it was funny. The I think I just met Stanley. I don't think I had him si even sign anything then. I just got a chance to talk to him briefly and shake his hand and talk to him. The guy in front of me was getting his amazing Fantasy 15 signed. And he's like, oh, I haven't signed a whole lot of these. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's got the first Spider-Man. You know, it's an amazing, amazing book getting signed by Stan Lee. Um, but yeah, I've just been really lucky. I mean, almost everyone like I'm, I'm Jeff Johns and uh, Brad Meltzer and Brian K. Vaughn and Robert Kirkman. Uh, we've had Q and A Skype uh, through with um, Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, sure. We've done we had a Skype with Robert Kirkman. We had Kirkman in store way back in 2006. We just kind of fell into that, you know, uh, catching him at at um, San Diego Con. He was like, oh, hey, I, you know, was, I was like, oh, I'm going to buy, you have Walking Dead number one on your table, you know, later on a $1,500 book. And he's like, oh, do you think it'd be okay if I charge $10 for this? I was like, Robert, I'll buy a bunch from you right now for 10. You need to charge like 20 for this book. This is the hottest book going, you know, you need to trust me, Walking Dead's phenomenal. Every issue is just catching on. And I was like, here, I'll buy, I'll buy like 10 copies or whatever it is from you now. Cause he had like a hundred copies. I was like, mark them up to 20. If you don't sell them for 20, I will buy the rest from you for 20 at the rest at the end of the weekend. He was like, are you sure? I was like, trust me, man. People love this book. And not only was um, uh, Tony Moore there doing free sketches for Walking Dead, uh, Charlie Adler was there doing free sketch for Walking Dead. Robert Kirkman can actually draw a pretty good zombie. So he was doing free sketches for Walking Dead and signing all these books. So it was like, hey, Robert, trust me. And uh, so I kept checking back in with him. I checked back Friday. He was like, oh, man, I'm almost out of copies. I felt you know, crazy charging 20 bucks and people were happy to buy them. I was like, I told you. He's like, hey, man, is there anything I can do to repay you? I was like, if you're ever in Florida, let me know. We'd love to set up a signing. And he's like, I'm going to be in Florida two weeks to see my parents. They live in you know, Jacksonville and we're going to go to mm -hmm. Disney. I was like, well, let's set this up. So we're able to set up a signing with him and uh um, Carl Moline and Derek Donovan, two people that he's worked with in the industry he, on Jubilee of all things. Uh, they, they did some issues of Jubilee with him. A uh, very short run miniseries that was uh, very weird. It was crazy. And just Marvel just letting him go all out. It got weirder and weirder as it went on. Um, but yeah, ultimately, um, I've been really, really lucky to just have, you know, start of friendships with some of these guys that the front of their career, you know, Jeff Johns, I was talking to him back in the day on, on, you know, on AIM, on AOL and some messenger, you know, and he, he kind of showed me some stuff, uh, in advance of like infinite crisis and stuff. And it was like, Oh, got to keep this secret. I'm like, I will, I will. I'm not going to burn that trust and like show something I'm not supposed to show. But, um, yeah, I've just been really lucky to meet almost everyone in the industry that I've, um, wanted to meet and, uh, you know, been like walking dead. We were able to watch the, um, the premiere of that at San Diego con at the panel in that same panel. I'm literally, and I look over to my, my right and I'm like, Oh, there's, um, there's Simon Pegg. Oh, he's, and he, he was like, Shh. I was like, Hey, I'm cool, man. I'm not going to, you know, blow you up. If we're, we're just, he's here as a fan too. He's a giant comic book fan. So he's as excited to watch the first episode of the walking dead as the rest of us are in this panel. And it's just kind of funny, you know, bumping into people like that where they're incognito. Glenn Danzig is at a show buying, you know, he's got a, a name tag that does not say Glenn Danzig. It says somebody, you know, it's his agent's name or whatever. And it's like, and we're, we're talking to him and he was like, he's like, quiet, man, quiet. He's like, you know, don't, don't blow me up. Like, we're like, we're, we're good, man. We're not going to ask for pictures or anything. It was just cool talking to all these people that, um, you know, San Diego, especially then, it was like such a low-key thing. You'd walk down the street and you're walking next to Kevin Smith. Oh, there's Tom Lennon from the state. You know, he's a big uh, nerd uh, and into, like he was helping to host the Eisners and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've just been lucky. I mean, almost all the Walking Dead cast um, that I've wanted to meet, I've been able to meet uh, almost all of the um, big um, celebrities. Uh, I've been been pretty lucky to catch almost everyone I want to. And at this point, at a, you know, if I go to MegaCon or something like that, I don't leave the booth. Like people, people kind of joke about like, oh yeah, I I rarely leave my booth too. I'm like, no, I like never leave the booth. <laughs> I'm like, I'm there, you know, the whole day from 10 a.m. until seven, and just like like clockwork, like it's crazy. So, um, but yeah, I, I love what I do. I just love love this industry. I love everything about it, and I'm just glad to see it's. Um, changing and evolving i think in a better way where more and more people are kind of getting into this stuff and it's it's def definitely a lot more fun um you know going to these conventions and seeing such a cross-section of people leaving with something that makes them really happy you know getting to meet a celebrity and all that stuff so yeah uh, just go going really well thank you so much for sharing that with us we really do appreciate it. those are some incredible stories now to go back for for a moment here to famous faces and funnies and i want to let everyone know that they just celebrated their 27 year anniversary, you and your team. So I gotta, I gotta ask, 
What does it feel like to know that this place of yours has been open for 27 years and the staff that has come and gone and those who are going to be the future of this industry with you at that store? What did it, what did it feel like when you had to tell it, when you told your staff, hey, guys, guess what? We're 27 years young. How does that make you feel? Uh, it feels amazing. I mean, that's the thing. I, I absolutely love what I do. I love that this industry has taken off so much that, you know, I, I, I know it sounds like a broken record, but that, you know, pop culture is nerd culture. You know, everyone's what's that next Marvel movie? You know, what's this next DC uh, TV series? You know, we're just seeing so many wonderful things getting adapted uh, that have really, really led to a whole new audience. And it's it's changed so much. I mean, we're just seeing more and more people come in with their whole families. We're seeing more couples coming in and buying comics together. Uh, that's that's probably the most positive change I've seen over the last 27 uh, years of Famous Faces and um, and watching that grow. Uh, to a whole new audience and people getting hooked on, you know, something like Invincible, like the Invincible the first few episodes came out. Phenomenal, phenomenal series. It's so good. Uh, very, very violent. Uh, not something you should really watch with the younger, younger kids, but uh, it's definitely a great, uh, great series. And Robert Kirkman and everyone that adapted it did an unbelievable job on that. So um, at this point, you know, people see Invincible on Friday night when it first is on. It comes on Friday or even Thursday night to Friday. And on that Saturday and Sunday, people, oh, do you have Invincible? Do you have the trades? Do you have the compendiums? What do you have? You know, and we're we're just quick. We're always ahead of the curve. Uh, every week we do. Um, weekly reorders uh, every Monday night. So Monday, I'm doing final order cutoff stuff till midnight, and then from midnight till about two two a.m. Uh, I have a, a friend that Diamond that keeps my vampire hours. It's up in the middle of the night. Um, so he basically will call. We'll just go over. Oh, I need three more copies of Invincible Volume Four. I need you know five more copies of Invincible Volume One. Whatever it is, we're getting getting um, reordered for people. What if it's something we're missing? We'll, we'll fill in a want list, and then every Thursday or Friday when we have it in stock, we um, or uh, then call you know calling or messaging that customer. Hey, we have this for you. Oh, hey, it's in your folder. Next time you come in, you know it's here for you to pick up. So um, we do we do our best there. But um, yeah, just over the the last twenty seven years, we, I've watched the industry grow and change, and I'm I'm super happy with where it's going. I'm super happy to have as much community involvement as we do. That's been one of the biggest. Um, downsides of the pandemic is we used to host a weekly trivia, a weekly geek trivia. One week could be Power Rangers, one week could be 80s cartoons, one week would be, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Sam and Paul and Steven have especially have done an incredible job as they've taken over more and more of the writing of that than I used to. The first few, um, probably the first year or two we did that, we, we were doing that like five years, if you can believe it. That's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And it was weekly geek trivia and it was just, um, we did The Office. Leah wrote an incredible batch of questions for The Office. We had about 310 people there for The Office, which is the most amount of people they've ever crammed into Broken Barrel uh, Tavern. Uh, we just couldn't believe We were people literally standing. Um, they were like, we know we can't get a table. We know we can't get food. Uh, we can just get drinks. Is there any way we can still do trivia? We we're like, yeah, yeah, you're fine. So we had 66 teams of, you know, of three, four, five, six people on a team. Um, and it was just crazy. Like wa watching um, that many people come out for an event like that. We had Rick and Morty the first time. We had almost 250 people for trivia for Rick and Morty. And, uh, you know, Stranger Things, just whatever. We've done also, we've, we've done Grey's Anatomy. We've done uh, just some so uh, Saturday Night Live. You know, we've had some that are big, some that are small. But it, we, we love what we do. We love interacting with the community. And I think that's a lot of what um, led to our success over the last year, even being closed for eight months of the of 2020, all the way from March uh, 24th to December 1st until we reopened, we still had our best year ever. We were up by just a small percent, um, but we were up, I think, because of the community involvement of going to Cinema World and, and handing out free comics and every comic book movie you can possibly imagine. We used to watch Walking Dead there the first uh, three years uh, we were watching Walking Dead every single Sunday for free. It was a free event. It was a lot of fun. And it was just a community involved. Even even before the movie started, we would do like silly little, hey, shoot this, you know, moving zombie that I've got this giant Walking Dead, like um, uh, the bicycle girl from the first episode or whatever. Like, you know, shoot uh, this silly zombie with a Nerf gun or whatever. And Or, oh, hey, uh, you, you bought a Walking Dead prize pack. You got a little zombie. Um, figure underneath it would say we used to have it where it said you won but eventually the people that worked there were like handing it to their friends for their win so they would win a free graphic novel or whatever so eventually it was just like oh well if you have number 19 19 is the first spirits of michonne so number 19 or number 27 the first spirits of the governor is written on the bottom of the your zombie come on down you want a free you know graphic novel or free ten dollar gift card or whatever you know just something like that we just try to do as much as we can in our community and that's something that's grown a lot and helped us grow over these last 27 years and hopefully 
you know, for 27 more years, we'll keep, and, and then some, we'll keep doing this, but I'm just lucky to have such a, an incredible staff that really loves what they do. And I think it shows every day and they're, they're uh, awesome ideas and brilliant um, things that have really helped our store grow. So very, very uh, thankful for that. Well, I think it's fair to say my hat's off to you and as well as congratulations to your staff on 27 years. And we wish you the best for 27 more years awesome. and maybe then some moving forward. Just make sure you have plenty of energy drinks in the back. Right. I will, <laughs> Now, if you had to describe just a few, just a few of your staff members as a comic book character, who would you describe him as? Huh, that's a great question. Um, Paul would have to be somebody X-Men related. That guy knows more about X-Men than I'm convinced most of the Marvel editors. I swear, man. He knows every little tiny uh, bit of information about the most obscure villain. I'll be like, oh, yeah, this character probably only appeared once. He's like, actually, they appeared three times. They appeared in you know X-Men 310 and 337 and then again in uh, adjectiveless X-Men number 45. And I'm like, only you would know that. Like, But he knows every little thing. Um, I really uh, – I don't, I don't have any – quick answers off the top of my head. But uh, I mean, like I said, if, if, you know, Sam's almost like a, a Tony Stark in the way their mind works and the, just the, the brilliance of coming up with new ideas to keep things fresh for, our, for the live sales. You know, we started doing like Star Wars uh, live sales once a month, whether it's Star Wars comics or trades or um, merchandise or Star Wars black figures. And just hands down, we've really, really lucked out uh, just having an audience for no matter what it is, whether it's just uh, whether it's a pop live sale or a comic live sale or half off graphic novel sale, um, we're we're lucky to be doing um, something different all the time. And if you're not into graphic novels, then don't watch this Monday where we do graphic novels. But if you're into pops, last night we did pops and we had a huge a good audience, you know, watching the whole time and new people finding us and covering it right away. So um, yeah, I, I would say Sam's more Tony Stark kind kind of. Uh, uh, person, uh, Paul's almost, if I had to pick him as an X-Men, this may be an odd choice, but maybe Forge just because, uh, the maker, uh, he can, you know, he can, he just seemingly always has, is able to find a way to make anything work. Uh, so maybe that's it kind of a stretch, but I don't know. Uh, but there's, there's some quick answers for you on a, uh, you know, a question. I'm not, not too, I kind of probably have to put some more thought into, but I, I am, I'm just lucky to have a brilliant staff that really, loves what they do and they love the freedom of like, Hey, if sorting back issues is not for you, then, you know, I'm not going to put you on something you're not enjoying. There's some, some staff where it's like, Oh, that's not really their area of expertise. So I'm going to get it handed over to someone else. That's kind of more suited for that or enjoys doing it more. You know, I don't want people to be, you don't, you don't want to dread your job. You know, I know too many people that are like, they tolerate what they do for a living. And it's like, you're supposed to love what you do for a living. And that's, I think the more important than anything. And we're, we're lucky to have that with, uh, with the success of our store and just keep on growing from there, you know? Hmm. That is all good. I can certainly understand that. Now, if you could look through one person's email without them knowing, whose email would you look through? Um, I think this answer the last year would be one of the higher ups at DC, maybe Jim Lee's, uh, but probably not for the reasons you'd, you'd expect. Um, DC has made some very odd choices. I've always been a lifelong DC fanboy. I love DC. Uh, I even don't mind as many of the DC movies, some movies from DC that were not uh, necessarily wonderful. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I overall enjoyed most of the DC stuff. I love the DC TV series, everything from CW, everything on the DC app. I mean, Doom Patrol is amazing. Titans I've really enjoyed. It's gotten better as it's gone on. Um, and there's just, uh, we're, we're, we're so lucky to see so many great things there. This last year, DC's choices with leaving Diamond and then jumping to two different distributors and then cutting down from that to a different, to one of the two distributors means we've had three different distributors for DC in the last year. Um, they also force us to do final or cut off on Sunday night. I try and have one day off a week. I think that's fair. Uh, we've been working six days a week since the pandemic started and sometimes even Sunday because of, you know, the 26 hour live sale or the stuff like that. Uh, so it, DC in the last year has made some choices that I definitely don't um, agree with. Uh, they they treated us like gold for years and years. They've laid off almost all their staff that we were really friends with. And um, I understand, I know it comes down to big business and AT&T uh, buying out WB slash DC. And it's, it's led to, you know, tons of billions of dollars in debt that it's the comic, the comic wing isn't going to make or break that. So it seems like some odd choices that I wish they hadn't made. But, uh, but yeah, if I, if I had to say Jim Lee as a higher up at DC to see what in the world, the process of uh, change, making all these changes that have made our life harder and basically led to us selling a lot, a lot less DC comics. I mean, like I said, we, every Monday we do direct orders and um, in general, I'm spending about 1500 or $2,000 on reorders um, every week. Um, DC used to be, 
a, you know, a third to half of that. And at this point, it's such a small amount because it's, it's, you know, um, they've made it harder for me to get reorders. Whereas every week I'm getting a, you know, effectively a um, pallet worth of comics uh, coming into our store. And it's, it's by DC taking their initial orders out of that. It, we no longer do palletized shipping through, um, through FedEx because it just didn't make much sense to be like, Oh, Hey, you're losing a third of this. So it's cheaper to pay per box through UPS than, um, than anything else but without getting into the boring uh, logistics of it. Um, DC has made our lives harder and it's led to us selling less DC comics in this last year compared to um, what it is. We'll always sell Batman year one and Watchmen. We have over 50,000 graphic novels in our store. So we're not exactly short, short stocked on anything, but um, before all this went down with, with um, going to a different distributor and them leaving diamond, I was like, Hey, let me get 25 copies of Watchmen. Let me get 15 copies of Batman year one. Let me get, you know, 12 copies of this book, I believe in. So we, we stocked up pretty well, but ultimately it's just, if you're going to make my life harder, it's harder to give you money and justify giving you money. Whereas, you know, image and boom and, um, and Mar even Marvel, uh, you know, they've really done a lot of great things for retailers over the last year. Um, and really, you know, offered returnability on some books and really, really helped take the burden off retailers, which we appreciate greatly. Whereas DC is kind of just, I don't know. They made, they made some choices. I love the characters. I love a lot of the creators. They've made some tough choices that I don't, I really wish they thought about more or got more input from retailers. And it just seems like every time we turn around, it's something else. They're going to stop printing their um, whopping one page poster slash catalog. So now we literally need to print it out ourselves and hand it to our customers that fill out a previews. It's like, seriously, you can't print a one page catalog to give us a, you, you know, you, you made it harder and harder to tell people what's coming out. And if people aren't excited about it and don't tell me they want it, I'm going to order less. So I hope that's worth it to save a few pennies to, you know, not send me 50 copies of a checklist anymore. Like we're willing to pay for them. We're willing to pay the whopping five bucks or whatever, if that's what it came down to, but it is not having a professionally printed checklist from DC uh, because God knows they're going to save a few pennies here and there. It just seems like an odd, odd choice. So who knows? But yeah, that's that, that if I could stoop into someone's email, it'd be like, Hey, what, what is the logic behind this that has led DC to selling a whole lot less? And I'm again, anyone knows me knows I've been a DC fanboy my whole life. Titans, Legion, Deathstroke. I love all DC characters. I love all, almost everything they've done, but this last year has been a challenge to put it lightly. And yeah, absolutely. And we're sorry that certain things have gone down. Hopefully things will get better later on either this year or next year. You never know. All you got to do is just keep those fingers crossed. Hope for the best. Now, last thing, and then we're going to turn things over to our audience because there are a number of questions coming in and I want to get to them as best I can. Cool. So Rick, if everything in your house had to be one color, what color would you choose? Um, that's a good question. Uh, maybe, maybe Deathstroke blue, I guess if I had to, <laughs> um, yeah, if I guess I would go Deathstroke blue, uh, if it came down to it, if I, if I had to force everything to be one color, so maybe, maybe go, maybe just cause orange is a little too loud. So. <laughs> All right, all right, I can see that. Now, first question from our, we're going to take our take the questions from the audience. This one's coming in from Dustin McDonald. He asks, what do you think of Garth Innes' Punisher run? I personally love how crazy as dark and dark it is. It's one of my personal favorite runs of all time. Uh, I absolutely love Garth Ennis' take on the Punisher. Uh, he, just, he is the definitive writer for Punisher. Um, I loved his Marvel Knights run. His Marvel Max stuff is even more crazy and over the top absolutely not kid friendly, but really there aren't a whole lot of Punisher kid friendly stories. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love Garth Ennis's take and they've done some of it was really over the top, the Marvel night stuff. Some of the stuff where he's, he's basically holding up, you know, uh, daredevil like a shield against the Russian. And he's like, what, you know, he wakes up after his face is all beat up and he's like, you know, he's like, what happened? He's like, we had a team up. It's like, he used you like a shield daredevil, you know, but Garth Ennis, whether he, um, there's some characters I wouldn't want to see him write. I wouldn't want to see him write the X-Men or the Justice League or whatever. But ultimately, Punisher, he just gets that character like nobody's business. And I think is the definitive Punisher writer. So, yeah, I absolutely love his run. And he's added so much to the mythos and done an incredible job with it. So, fantastic stuff. Hmm. Well, real quick, one's more of a comment from our friend Sage. She says, Cosplay Michael wants Rick to know he says hi. Well, hi right back to Cosplay Michael and the wonderful staff at Hanging With. Uh, we're lucky to have a uh, store. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're very, very thankful to just have such an awesome community um, all around that, uh, you know, that we, we love to see and interact and hope for things to get closer to back to normal soon so we can go to conventions and kind of see everyone on a more regular basis. So, uh, yeah, hi right back. And, and you know, thanks for all uh, your whole family does to really uh, support our store. We greatly appreciate it. Hmm. 
Absolutely. The next question comes from Dustin. He, he asks, does Famous Faces and Funnies have any other social media besides Facebook? Do you have a Twitter, Rick? Um, everything I do is pretty, pretty, you know, much just the store. I mean, uh, yeah, of course, you can find us on um, uh, Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram, everywhere at FFF Comics. We, we've lined it all up. Um, we even uh, we actually have two eBay accounts and one of them is FFF Comics. The other one is just Evil Rick, which was my uh nickname via uh the former owner kevin you know he was kind of kind of joked he was like i was like well actually no that's sin city that's the second series and this that and he was like man that's evil how you know all that so he just started as evil rick and then kind of you know when i was in um uh tv productions at palm bay high we just started calling them evil rick productions of just silly little videos with like this box head character and other dumb stuff you know but uh so yeah so the nickname evil rick stuck um and just it used to be evil rick's picks would be like that week's comics of like the stuff i read and enjoyed the most uh but yeah ultimately you can find us everywhere at fff comics on instagram twitter facebook um and yeah and, and i don't have any and you know a twitter or anything that's a, away from the the store um, so yeah, almost everything I do is, you know, work on the store so much. That's almost all I ever do. But if I'm not working on the store and watching cheesy horror movies, usually both at the same time. So that's my, my big, uh, escape outside of comics, I think. Hmm. <laughs> I see. I see where you're going with that. Next question comes from our good friend, Willow Schuyler up in O Canada. She asks, do you enjoy having cosplayers at your shop or around your booth during conventions? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always fun. Uh, we're always excited to have people, new people kind of getting into um, the industry. And it's it's cool seeing how much cosplay has changed and grown. You know, it used to be, oh, my God, there's five people here in costume at, a, you know, this tiny little one day hotel show. And now it's like cosplay is such a such an incredible thing that it's gotten so many new people into, you know, into these characters and into um, the industry. So, yeah, it's definitely a fun um, fun thing when we have our free comic book day, we have not only the 501st Legion, um, you know, in stormtroopers and in costume and other wonderful uh, Star Wars characters, but just so many people from uh, all sorts of stuff. I, I feel bad because when we have like a Halloween costume uh, thing, some of them are like, oh man, here's this incredible intricate costume from Steven Universe or from some obscure web series that I don't know anything about. Luckily, you know, some of our other judges are more on top of anime and stuff like that because someone can have the most extensive anime costume and I'll be like, if it's not a, you know, household name anime, I don't know a whole lot about it, but, um, but yeah, it's always, always great seeing uh, the excitement of, you know, especially little kids will come up and be like, Oh my God. Oh, look, that's Darth Vader. Or that's, you know, uh, this character from this cartoon or, or TV show they're into. So it's all awesome that, uh, you know, that people do such an incredible job. It's always cool to see like mashup cosplays. Like someone will come up with some incredible, brilliant thing. And it's like, oh man, here's, you know, um, uh, you know, just mixing, matching two things together that you wouldn't think of. And it's like a funny and clever cosplay, kind of something different. But yeah, it's all, it's always fun to be around cosplayers. Um, most of them, almost all of them are pretty, pretty upbeat and always have a great time. And, uh, you know, just, it's awesome to have that, that positivity of, of seeing, you know, people interact with their favorite characters, people going to the first comic convention and seeing someone in costume that looks straight off like they walked out of that cartoon or off that TV or movie, you know, so it's awesome. So, yeah, we're always happy to meet meet uh, cosplayers and have them at our, con at our conventions and at um, uh, free comic days and other store events like that, so. Well, going along with that, our next question comes from Sage. She asks, Cosplay Michael wants to know what character Rick would most want to cosplay as? I mean, I myself, uh, I I probably would never, you know, never really do it just because I swear it seems like I'm I'm just always so slammed, you know, working six days a week and sometimes seven. Even my Sunday is not much of a day off when I'm working on, you know, DC order forms and stuff like that. Um, I mean, if I if I really really maybe someday I'll finally make a Deathstroke costume. Um, I've got some some very talented friends that have made some incredible Deathstroke costumes. Um, you know, and uh, both um, uh, Trey and uh, Haas and, and stuff like that I actually have a Deathstroke mask made by a friend that it was like, oh, I'm going to get rid of this. I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. So I got, got grabbed that from him. But yeah, ultimately, um, I myself, it seemed I, I can't imagine going cosplaying anytime soon just because I'm always glued to the booth and, um, you know, like just constantly working at any convention or whatever. But yeah, if I, if I had to pick a character, maybe someday, maybe I'll finally say, hey, let's do this outside of a con, let's do a Deathstroke uh, cosplay. So maybe someday I'll, I'll, you know, dive into that. But, um, but yeah, it, it amazes me that the skill and 
uh, work that goes into how costumes where people are like, oh, I spent 30 hours putting this together. Oh, I spent, you know, 60 hours building this thing. And it's amazing to me the amount of how, how people are able to come up with creative ways to uh, make it look so authentic. So I'm always impressed by that, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I can totally understand that. And sometimes, you know, cosplay may or may not be for everybody. It's up. It's up to the person to decide for themselves. But your next question comes from Dustin. He asks, "What's your favorite Batman suit from TV shows or the movies?" Um, I don't really have a definitive answer. I mean, I've liked I've liked just about every Batman uh, costume you can think of, maybe minus the uh, Batman and Robin one. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, the less uh, said about nineteen ninety seven, the better. I think so. Uh, other than that, I mean, I've enjoyed almost every every version, whether it's, uh, you know, um, on the big screen or the small screen or, or anything. Um, yeah, I don't have any definitive answer, uh, but I, I've liked almost every take on uh, Batman's costume uh, that they've done. I think I'm always happy to see uh, them trying new things. Some work out great and others are like, man, that's a that's a choice. But uh, but yeah, other than the uh, basically, uh, you know, anything that's not the 1997 Batman and Robin, uh, I think I, I'm pretty happy with. So don't, we don't have a real definitive answer on that one. So <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. You're wise beyond your years right now. Everyone's been asking famous faces and funnies in West Melbourne, Florida. What is it like? What does it look like? What are some of the things that may may be thrown into the mix for good measure? What kind of items do you exactly sell in your store? Well, we have something for you. Who are watching, whether you're watching this live or at the replay, check this out. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Oh, my goodness. If I ever wanted to take a trip down to the Sunshine State, that is one of the places I would want to visit first. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, that's just it. We love we love what we do. Uh, we're lucky to have just such a, a great staff. I mean, I really, really um, can't you know, thank the wonderful staff enough that makes it look so easy. All the incredible work that goes into every day. Uh, I mean, we're, you know. Um, Sam especially keeps up with like want lists. We have a want list for comics, for pops, for toys. And basically this way, when you get it, we're getting in for the first time, we'll pull it for everyone that was requested in advance. Lately, we've been posting, um, Sean's also come up with the idea of like, Hey, look, let's post this in advance before we order it. Oh, we thought we needed three cases. It looks like we need five. Let's order a bunch more, you know, um, like the crow select. We sold so many of those. I think we sold almost 50 of the crow select figure recently. Um, and it was just in advance. I think like 20 were spoken for so we're like oh man we better jump up to like 36 and then 36 became 42 and 48 and 54 and so on i think they're currently on back order of diamond and we're like oh man we you know we sold through so many of these it's crazy um but yeah ultimately that's just it we love comics and toys and graphic novels uh we're getting more and more into manga as far as um trying new series things like demon slayer and um even some more obscure stuff that's that's finding an audience, your name and um, promise Neverland and stuff like that. Uh, we're, we're just really, really just trying to expand into new new things all the time. Um, we're actually taking on a project pretty soon where we're going to have more random merchandise um, care of one of our distributors. I think we're only the second person in the world that's done this. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But ultimately, we're just going to buy a whole lot of random stuff uh, at a at a um, discount. Um, but yeah, it'll basically lead to us getting some more storage units, selling more stuff on eBay, selling more stuff in our live sales. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just way ahead of the curve. We're in great shape. Our store's never been in better condition. So we're just going to continue to get new stuff, whether it's more comics, more graphic novels, more toys. We're always buying collections. If you're in the uh, Melbourne or Palm Bay area, we're happy to buy a collection. And almost every time it works out. We, we bought two collections this week. One was for about $5,000 worth of um, uh, Marvel Legends, uh, mostly in box, which you'll see uh, today on like our live sale. A lot of them will debut. But yeah, and then um, uh, a lot of loose figures too. And the, the customer was like, hey, I'm going to throw these in too. I was like, no, no, no. Here's what this is worth. We're going to give you this amount. He was like, are you sure? Are you sure you can give me that? I expected like a third of that. We're like, yes, we, we know we're going to pay you fairly. We want you to come to be happy. And he, he bought, he's been buying, you know, comics from us for um, for about a decade now. So of course, oh, you know, wow. we're going to treat him right. And, and, uh, you know, just tr make people happy enough to, you know, come back and, um, you know, and, and 
just keep things going the way they're supposed to be. So that's what it's all about is just making sure people leave happy and making sure they feel like they were treated fairly and, you know, come on back with a smile on their face. That's what it's all about. Same thing. We, any books we recommend, you know, we, we tell people all the time, it's a little harder through mail order, but um, any book you recommend, if we recommend stray dogs and if it's not your cup of tea, uh, you can bring it back for a money back guarantee. And uh, almost never does that happen. Maybe once every like two and a half, three months, someone's like, Oh, that wasn't my, my thing. We're like, okay, cool. Trade out for something else. Or, you know, we'll just straight up give you your money back. But, it's very rare we actually have to do that because we, as we get to know people and go, oh, your favorite TV shows are this and this and this. You like these movies? You like this other comic? Okay, well, uh, we think you'll enjoy this. If you like this by Robert Kirkman, we think you'll enjoy this by Robert Kirkman or a similar writer that's kind of on the upswing, you know, whether it's Donny Cates or um, some of the guys blowing up an image now or just putting out some really, really cool uh, new product uh, through Image and Boom and some other companies. So, um, yeah, just, we, you know, we love what we do and I think it shows and we're just thankful to have that. So. If you had to ballpark it, how many states or how many countries have you guys shipped to? Um, we've we don't do a whole lot of international shipping. We mostly do um, just because we've had a few problems here where it's like it kind of turns into oh no, it got lost in the U.S. No, no, it left the U.S. but it got lost in you know uh, here or there. There's a few regular customers in Australia. There's some in Holland. There's some uh, just all over the place. Um, but ultimately, I would say we have shipped to almost all of the 50 states. We've sold a few things to Hawaii uh, and a handful to Alaska. Um, so yeah, ultimately I would say we've sold just, I, I think we've sold every state. I think we've sold at least some mail order um, to, uh, we sell a lot to California. We, uh, we're we not thrilled with the shipping charges that are included with that because we do $10 fly rate shipping, but it is what it is. If we're sending someone you know, $300 worth of stuff, we know we're gonna eat 10 or 20 bucks on the shipping, but, um, but it, it, you know, ultimately it works out. We try and treat people fairly and having a $10 flat rate shipping is fairly easy to explain, compare. And sometimes people are like, wait, are you sure I'm buying 30 pops? We're like, it's still $10 flat rate shipping. You know, it's just that we try and keep it as fair as possible and, and make people happy, you know? 100%. I could not agree more. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Rick Shea, owner and operator of Famous Faces, Funnies, Comics and Toys for being with us on the show this week. Here at Andi Club, but before we go, Rick, where can everyone find you on social media, and what projects do you have coming up? Um, with the big project is really just the new random merchandise, random toys. I mean, we're going to have all sorts of stuff we've never had before, uh, whether it's uh, mainstream comics or manga and anime. So we're excited about that. We're going to keep doing live sales six days a week. Uh, we're we're usually not doing them on Sunday or Tuesday, but uh, every Saturday. Um, you can find us twice and then uh, mon Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. You can find us with live sales all throughout the week at different times, different themes. We have it all lined up where you can find our calendar on our Facebook page, which is, of course, FFF Comics, Instagram, FFF Comics or or Twitter, FFF Comics, any of those. Uh, and same thing, eBay as well. FFF Comics, we are is our, our eBay. We're trying to kind of we're doing more merchandise through there as we kind of build that back up. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can find us everywhere at FFF comics and we're uh, super happy and, and uh, thankful to be here. So thanks for uh, taking the time and talking with us, Ryan. We certainly appreciate it. Well, thank you for being with us, Rick. Thank you all for joining us for this week's episode of, and I quote, you can find me Ryan and all of everything that we're doing here at nerd culture on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at it's nerd culture. By the way, if you're wondering if you could look through someone's email, which email would you want to look through? If you had to pick one color for every object in their house to be, which color would you pick? You know where those questions come from? Well, this episode and every episode of And I Quote is powered by Poddex. Poddex are the hottest new tool for podcasters looking to have more meaningful conversations or game gamify their podcast. Simply shuffle them up, ask a question, let the good times and the content roll. Get yours today at poddex.com and use the promo code NERDCULTURE for 10% off your order. In the meantime, check out our YouTube channel. New videos are being posted each and every week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. And in the meantime, to everyone out there, stay healthy, stay strong, stay safe, and read comics. Take care, everyone.